Hello everybody, welcome to today's reflection. Today's reflection is going to be about uh, hearing the voice of God or how God speaks to us human beings, how God communicates with us. Uh, there are many people out there who wish that God will speak to them directly. There are many Christians who uh, yearn and long for uh, hearing the voice of God. There are a lot of church leaders who wonder whether God speaks to them. Let's see what the scripture have to say about how God speaks to us. Job chapter 33 from verses 14 to 17. Let's hear the reading of God's word. For God speaks in one way and even twice, yet people do not perceive. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on mortals, while they slumber on their beds, then God opens their ears and seals their instruction that he may turn them aside from their deed and keep them from pride. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, if you're out there and you have been wondering why, how God speaks to you or how God speaks to people, here we have it. This is Job, the book of Job. And Job went through a lot of pain in, in his life. And here Job is recorded saying that God speaks to people in a dream, in visions of the night, when deep sleep falls on people, then God opens their ears and seals their instruction. One of the reasons why God does not speak to a lot of people is because of pride. If God were to speak to you directly, like I'm speaking to you now, the human condition have the tendency of arguing with God because humanity has been arguing with men of God who reveal the things of the Holy Spirit and have challenged men of God that God doesn't exist. So if you are challenging me as a vicar that God does not exist, how then do you expect that God will speak to you? If God were to speak to you directly as I'm doing now, you have every tendency to argue back, to try and have a tug of war with God. Moses had it at the burning bush. When God tried to call Moses to go and deliver the children of Israel, Moses was talking back to God. Moses was arguing with God. In the end, God told Moses that, look, your brother will meet you as you are going back and he will be your mouthpiece. So brothers and sisters, God speaks in one way, even in two ways. Yet people do not perceive God is speaking all the time. God speaks to us in dreams, in vision. When we sleep, when deep sleep fall on mortals, God will seal our instruction the ability we have to argue back with God. When deep sleep fall on mortals, God seals that instructions. Then he will speak to us in dreams and in vision. That we may turn aside from our deed and keep us from our pride. Because it is by pride that we fail to hear God. It is by pride that we fail to listen to God. It is by pride that people fail to believe in God. It is by pride that people fail to believe that God exists. It is by pride that people think that they are a mistake and their mother and father made a mistake and they just appeared on the scene. Brothers and sisters, God is the creator of the universe. God is the creator of humanity. God is the creator of human beings. So if you will allow yourself and open yourself up, God will speak to you in a dream and in a vision. When you are going to sleep 
all you have to do is to go on your knees and pray to God and ask God to reveal things to you. Ask God to speak to you in the visions of the night. And I will assure you that God will meet you in your dream. God will reveal himself to you. God speaks to us in many ways. In the Gospel of Matthew, in Matthew chapter 9 from verses 18 to 26, Jesus met a man whose daughter was sick. The man spoke to Jesus that Jesus should come to his house and heal his daughter. While Jesus was on his way to heal this man's daughter, there was a woman who has been sick for 12 years. She has had blood flowing from her for 12 years. That woman said in her heart and in her mind that only if I can touch the hem of his garment, I will be made well. But that woman had a focus in her mind and in her heart. She believed that if only she can touch the hem of the garment of Jesus, she will be made whole. And guess what? As people were following Jesus, the crowd was large. This woman fought her way through. She fought her way through the crowd and she touched the hem of the garment of Jesus. Guess what? As soon as she touched the hem of the garment of Jesus, immediately the blood which was flowing from her like a fountain stopped. Jesus perceived that power have gone out. And so as he was walking with the crowd, he stopped and said, who touched me? And the woman came trembling. Why have I brought that story into my little message today? I brought that story because Jesus had in him the inclination of God. Jesus could hear from his father most of the time. People say that something told me not to do that. Most of the time, people say that something told me to call so so and so. Most of the time, people will say that, oh, something told me not to go out today. Most of the time, people will say that, oh, something told me not to board that plane. Or something told me not to drive. Something told me to take a walk. Something told me to call my friend. Who do you think that something is, brothers and sisters? That something you are referring to is God speaking to you. The problem is most of the time we ignore the voice of God that speaks to us all the time. I give the analogy of somebody going to the gym. I am a weightlifter. I love weight. I lift weights. And when I began to lift weight, when you go to the gym, you cannot go and lift two or three hundred kilos. It will try, if you try and lift that amount of kilos, it will kill you. Simply, it will just kill you. But you have to start lifting 2 or 3 or 5 or 10 kilos. You have to train with those level of kilos until you build your muscles up. In order for God or in order for you to hear God's voice, in order for you to be assured of God's voice, you need to begin to listen to the little things God tells you to do. God normally tells you not to argue with that person, but you override that voice and you argue anyway. God will normally tell you not to argue with your husband or your wife, but you will override that voice and argue with your spouse anyway. God will tell you not to argue with your children or not argue with your parent. You will override that voice and argue with your parent anyway. God will tell you not to go out today or not to drive or not to take a walk or not to run. Or, you know, go and speak to your colleague at work. Or say hello to the person walking on the pavement. But most of the time, we ignore those voices. Brothers and sisters, if you ignore those little voices, then God is not able to build your hearing up to the point where you can hear the big things that he wants to say to you. Brothers and sisters, today I came to assure you and I came to tell you that God does speak to human beings. God speaks to me all the time. God speaks to you all the time. All you have to do is to pay attention to those little small voice. We are told in scripture that Elijah, God spoke to him in a still small voice. 
There was a storm. There was a wind. There was a mighty fire. But all of them, God was not in it. But God spoke to him in a still small voice. It is only through a little small voice that God spoke to the greatest prophet that ever lived. This prophet called down fire and called down rain. Elijah the prophet, God spoke to him in a small little voice. Brothers and sisters, God speaks to us. In order for God to speak to you, you need to develop a relationship with Jesus Christ. You need to believe in God. Proclaim, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And you will be saved. When you have done that, your life will never remain the same. God will begin to speak to you. God will begin to direct your path. God will begin to lift you up and transform your life. And you will have a successful life in every area of your life. It, for those of us who are in church, for those of us Christians, if you want to know how God will speak to you, we are told here that God will speak to us in vision and in dreams. But I will say further that if you want to hear the voice of God, you need to develop a personal relationship with him. Sit down in a particular place in your house. Develop a devotional time. Read the scriptures. God can speak to you through reading of the scriptures. God can speak to you in a little small voice. Brothers and sisters, God that speaks to us. We are told here that God speaks once and twice. In a dream and in a vision, when deep sleep fall on mortals, God will seal our instruction and he will be able to speak to us in our dreams and in our visions to turn us aside from our deeds and keep us from pride. Move away from pride. Humble yourself. Come to God in humility and remind God that you want to hear him speak to you. And God will never disappoint you because he has never disappointed anybody in, in history, in time past. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. If you seek him diligently, he will reward you by speaking to you. He will reward you by revealing himself to you. God has revealed himself to me before. He continues to reveal himself to me from time to time. And so if you seek God, he will reveal himself to you. All you have to do is go down on your knees. Pray to God that one, you want to hear his voice. And two, that you want to see his glory. And God will reveal himself to you. If you are not a believer of God, I want to urge you and encourage you. I invite you to confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead. And he is seated at the right hand of God and intercede for humanity. If you do that, you will be saved. And after you have been saved, God will begin to speak to you clearly and with clarity. God will begin to direct your path. God will begin to put in your way men and women who will help you to your destiny. Men and women who will help you to succeed in life. For those of you who are teenagers and children, begin to seek God in your life. When you seek God with all your heart and soul and mind, God will meet you. God will transform your life. God will bring in your life every purpose that he has planned for you. For he has good plans for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you an expected end. When you seek God with all your heart, when you seek God with all your soul, your mind, and your spirit, then God will meet you and he will speak to you. He will reveal himself to you. When you are going to bed, pray to God. Go on your knees and pray. When you wake up in the morning, pray. Go on your knees and pray. Seek God in your day-to-day -day life. As you go about your business, seek God in your life and he will speak to you. Tell God that you want to hear him speak. And I can assure you that God will speak to you. Brothers and sisters, today we have learned that God speaks to us. As you go about your business, pray to God that you want to hear his voice. Pray to God that you want to see him in your visions and in your dreams. And God will reveal his glory to you. And God will reveal himself to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.